Good morning and welcome to the program and um, we have got newspapers to take a look at the front pages and just to go through what is on the front page of local dailies. We have got four, the Star, Daily Nation, the Standard and finally People Daily. I uh, have got uh, Osido who is already in studio with me. Uh, there you have him gentlemen i have uh, that is um, kevin osido is a political analyst as well as a county governor's watch executive director there you have him we will be having a very nice discussion here shortly probably just to get your voice good morning good morning sir how are good you good to see you fine thank you yeah, yeah it's a wonderful morning we are having mm -hmm. with, how's the uh, weekend uh, not bad yes very busy politically mm -hmm. uh, having a, a time to also have personal reflections yeah. on the happenings of the country and how to make sense out of all these things that are happening around us as the end of the day because that's the the whole essence of us being here sure we're going to get into that very shortly but how about you take a look at what we have on the front pages mm -hmm. let me start with the star newspaper big clash as ruto raila dialogue faces collapse big clash as ruto raila dialogue faces collapse stage set for showdown as the two sides tussle over controversial finance bill that is also the front page of the star newspaper as Emil threatens to completely dissolve 14 member talks team by tuesday when the call the talks stopped last week they had um a kind of a break last week they gave uh kenya kwanza an ultimatum which uh, lapses tomorrow and after that they'll make an announcement on the way forward how will it be stage set for showdown as the two sides tussle over controversial finance bill of course they also had some reservations in as far as that talks is concerned they talked the issue of uh the preservation of the ibc servers they talked about uh this to stop kenya kwanza to stop interference with the jubilee party being an affiliate of the azimio as well as other two other concerns and that is there of course during an interdenominational inter prayer at the busia stadium and that is where he said that the whole issue of tax is unstoppable i don't know what you make of this um the tax debate is here the controversial debate is still here as again they have got their final case to handle tomorrow what do you make of this a very heavy week to take care of this week yeah quite heavy but interestingly from the onset i think i'm one of the people who said that there would uh, be nothing much to expect from mm. the bipartisan conversations because a lot of the issues that have been raised by both uh, of course initially it was a zimula umoja one kenya mm. alliance and then uh, kenya kwanza came up with i think one or two of the amendments to the issues of, of uh, conversations yeah. which included conversations around uh, opening the up the server and then two was the uh, the IEBC concerns around boundaries uh, boundaries delimitation mm -hmm. now um, concerns around the uh, cost of living in my view I still believe that there could be a mechanism in which Parliament can be able to have those conversations without having 14 men and women yeah. speak yeah. And, and and then you basically have a supplementary budget or now that we are in the budget making process mm. you look at what are the ne negative aspects and it's a beautiful thing because that is happening in the midst of the finance bill mm -hmm. so as has a very opportune moment to be able to now rally its supporters around their opinion and much more fundamentally the recommendation around cost of living and of course the finance bill yeah uh, what what do they have to lose um, nothing much but I think what is lacking from the conversations is what I normally call the highest level of political goodwill yeah I don't think that uh, the the highest uh, seat within Kenya Kwanzaa is interested in the conversations. Mm. Initially, of course, we have seen the president and the former prime minister having some bit of bits of handshakes, but I think probably the deputy president is one of the discomforts within the talks, within, uh, within talk inside Kenya Kwanzaa uh, mm -hmm. government. Mm. So to the extent that um, that is happening, then of course, each and every one of them will be asking, what do we have to lose and what do we have to gain That's out of these conversations? Who, is, who stands to lose and gain? So Kenya Kwanzaa has a lot to lose because Azimio has uh, shown that has, has proven that it has the capacity to mobilize and to sustain Mandamanus, yeah. which I think is really the oil behind Azimio Laomoja. But to the level 
that that Kenya Kwanza has failed mm. to contain talks within the talks and then ultimately a mandamano's outside i think it will show that the government is one illegitimate to the uh, followers and supporters of Azimio mm. and then two to the level that you are unable to uh, safeguard uh, people's property because we have seen uh, police shooting uh, uh, hurling tear gas around yeah. we have also seen people losing their lives but the government has failed to enhance its level of accountability mm. so the threat that Azimio is making that uh, we are going to call off the talks should be a, a big concern to the government because the government is one that has to be able to ensure that citizens feel your power and might to the level that they are comfortable to do their business, go about to you know do their uh, carry out their activities without interference. Now that is the kind of stick that Azimio is throwing to the government. Mm. But if you fail to, les to listen to us, we are able to mobilize our supporters. Fast forward to 6th of June. Yeah. <clears throat> MPs will resume from their recess. And here we have this one. The president is now campaigning actually for this bill to pass. Yeah. What if it doesn't go through? The bill has to go through. And it has to go through so that government has money to do its business. Failure to pass the bill means that uh, the government will be stalled. But now the beauty of it is that the, the chair of the budget committee has already indicated mm. a willingness to have amendments. Because initially we saw uh, a number of Azimio, I, I mean uh, Kenya Kwanza MPs saying the bill will go through without any, uh, any amendments. Mm -hmm. Given the kind of conversations that we are seeing, during the public participation and processes. Even the public mood, of course. Exactly. And even the public mood yeah. indicates that the kind of proposals that Kenya Kwanza has in its, in, in, in its finance bill, a majority of them are not favorable to Kenyans. Mm. So without those amendments, then I think there's going to be a total backlash to the government. And... Uh, it, it, it might be difficult for them to show Kenyans mm. why they have to push such a kind of a bill down the throats of Kenyans. Mm. But I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited about the sentiments of uh, the MP Molo. And he says that, yes, we have listened to Kenyans, they have brought their petitions, and some of them have even given us very good recommendations in terms of how we can be able to enhance our revenue uh, generation within the country. Now, that is a good spirit mm -hmm. that both parliament, that, uh, parliamentarians from both Azimio and also Kenya Kwanza need to take advantage of and mm. therefore engage with the committee to mm. the level that when they finally retreat to write the report then they are able to ensure that issues that do not affect so much Kenyans yeah, are, fully are, captured, are actually fully captured. Yeah. But I think the president also needs to take a very uh, proper step in terms of leadership. Mm. Not to indicate that this, this bill must pass because it doesn't have to pass but yes you need money to, as a government because to the really government and, should have alternative ways of raising funds for public utility Exactly. And development. But then going back to 2020, 2021, yeah. remember President Kenyatta also had the same proposal. That was way back in 2020. It was at 1.5%. Correct. The same pressure groups also said that, you know what, this is not going to pass. And yeah. when you listen to Kim Tata speak yesterday, right in front of the president, yeah. and I went to court <laughs> and all these things collapsed. Yeah. If at all it goes through, court case awaits? Precisely. Failure to listen to the people's voice because public participation is a national values principle of the mm. Constitution. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the desire to have government that is magnanimous yeah. enough to listen to Kenyans is a good principle of governance and leadership. So the moment you fail to listen to the minority and, and allow the majority to have their way without mm. minority having their say, mm. you are beginning to build up mechanisms of being called a dictator. Mm. And I don't, I don't think President William Ruto wants to go down as one of those president who, presidents who was uh, termed as a dictator mm. and this must not happen to him because it is the finance bill is at the uh, uh, is at the position of public consultations public participation and even parliamentarians are speaking and right now they have even a much more better time to engage their constituents because they are at home before yeah. they before they ultimately come back i think it's next week mm. so with all these opportunities that we have there should be no reason why the president should wait to be taken to court and i have to also applaud the judiciary because we have seen the judiciary actually being very uh, um, progressive to be able to listen to public mood public voices and a number of the judgments that have had to do with this government i think have been have been stopped at some levels mm. so the president should be wary of court cases because i think this is going to be his first budget as a president yes i don't think he wants to begin that race and and run with court cases and baggage around him so in my view uh, i don't think the finance bill has to some of the the the, the proposals in the finance bill must go the way they are exactly. supposed to go exactly. 
there is room for proper consultations. For example, I don't believe mm -hmm. that for you to create employment, you must only send young people to, to Mijengos. There are a number of young people in this country who have very great innovative ideas yeah. on how government can be able to ensure employment for, for the youth. It doesn't have to go I through... Uh, you know, <laughs> exactly. Across the country. You don't have to send yeah. them to, to Mijengos. Number two, uh, housing largely is a, is, a, is a county government function. And I don't think that the government has listened to county governments. Mm. So there has to be an opportunity for inter intergovernmental relations between county governments and also the national government. Yeah. Why? Because the national government will have to listen to and rely on county governments for land. Mm -hmm. They're not going to build houses in the air. Mm -hmm. They are going to be physical structures. So urban Urban, urban development uh, positions, infrastructural frameworks for county governments mm. must, give, must, must be given a place of, of stay within the table, which mm. I don't think is a conversation that has taken place. Number two, why don't we consider having a pilot scheme for housing? Because I normally ask, yes, of course, within the big four agenda of the Jubilee government, we had housing as an agenda. Mm. Why can't government come up and show Kenyans what they have been, been able to build? Give us the number of houses you build within the first term of government because President William Ruto is actually enhancing what President Uru Kenyatta did. Yes. There is nothing agenda. new. But I get quite disturbed that the PS Hinga is at pains to explain what he used to do very excitedly and mm -hmm. in a very uh, progressive and creative manner. Why is it so difficult to ensure that citizens are actually just taken through a proper conversation for them to understand how to do it? Then the, 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 the other thing is government has not communicated effectively to citizens and i think that the president is really struggling yeah. the people around him that are supposed to help him to communicate have not done a very good job to mm. be able to break down uh, many most of the proposals that they have especially the housing fund whether it's a tax whether it's a contribution or whether it's a levy mm. so that citizens are able to understand and i think three weeks ago the president was also at, uh, at pains to explain to kenyans whether it was a tax a levy a contribution then he went and said the constitution gives me the power to, to, to tax you. And that's why uh, Moshima Okio on Tata tells him that yes, the constitution gives you that power, but we also have rights and responsibilities as citizens. Yeah. And if they are uh, interfered with, then we will go back to court. So I think that the president needs to listen to the mood of, of, of Kenyans. Mm -hmm look at the various proposals, and I'm sure I'll be given a report by the Budget Committee, and then analyze the pros and cons of a number of the issues yes. that Kenyans are talking about. Kevin, protests loom as Ruto and Raila talk, uh, talks face collapse. That is until tomorrow. According to Azimio, they said that they endorsed the decision by the delegation to walk out of talks until Kenya Kwanzaa agrees to deal with the interim issues raised by the team that is talks to remain suspended until there. Now, we have got a big clash yesterday. They had got some of the reservations and of course there are cases they want to handle. But when you look at that case, it's going to be some kind of heavy moment even for the president to handle. 6th of June. Um, don't you think that the president has got so much to lose in this case? Just to speak, because when you have got Manda Manos again, Azimio saying they're going to walk out of this kind of talks, we have got tax levy, we have got unemployment and then again manda mano how will the president sieve all these two or all, all these three reasons all these three positions ahead of 6th of june when i are going to take charge they are going to run with the situation and the position is here as you said they have nothing to lose yeah um i think that the president in my view needs to provide leadership mm -hmm. and he needs to stop listening to uh, naysayers around uh, the need for him to stand as a president of everyone yeah. a president who uh, swore by the constitution and and by the spirit of kenyans that he is going to be a president for everyone and stop listening to voices like the ones that are telling him that if you're not as good as a stakeholder mm. in kenya kwanza government because you didn't vote for us then this government is not going to work for you and i think almost uh, there are lots of um, you know actions that the president have been taking including public service employment uh, including uh, appointments appointments to uh, various agencies, ministries, and, de and uh, departments of government yeah. that really indicate that, uh, that, that this Kenya Kwanzaa government looks mm. like one that is very reserved for, us, uh, for a special group of people. And that is why Kenya, that, that's why Azimio Laomoja more or less will find the fuel mm. to be able to now uh, fight uh, against a number of the actions that, that uh, Kenya Kwanzaa government is actually uh, 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 propelling. Yeah. Now, for that not to happen, I think that what most of the Azimio Laomoja uh, 
uh, proponents and, and supporters mm -hmm. are waiting for is a handshake, is a handshake. <laughs> which the president has had with the former pri prime minister but i think the the political goodwill to move it to move it and and and, and get it closer yes. to what the supporters of azimio Umoja are looking for is not there mm. and that's why initially i say that i think that the biggest hindrance to these conversations is actually uh, not just the deputy president but a number of those other voices that are of the opinion that azimio Umoja needs to be locked out now within the talks are some progressive aspects for example strengthening uh, oversight and uh, accountability for government mm by putting in place office of official leader of opposition. Yes. Now, I do not think that within this term, this, this term of government, such a position can be there unless there are other extra 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 efforts which therefore call for include amending some part of the constitution exactly and you see that is part of the executive and yeah. if for you to amend an executive you need a referendum which is not just a, 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 a parliamentary process mm -hmm. it has to be a popular initiative mm -hmm. with the kind of economic scenario that Kenya uh, finds herself in right now I don't think that uh, Kenyans are, are interested in a referendum Kenyans want opportunities for young people to get jobs uh, parents like like ourselves want to take our children to school yeah. we need more monies in our pockets mm. to be able to ensure that there is food on the table and we want government to move from one market to the other mm. which i don't think uh, a political climate for a referendum is going to favor it that is why the president and the former prime minister will have to sit as two people and and agree on how to move this conversation forward now the, the options that could be on the table are also not necessarily to mean that as Emil supporters will benefit because, for example, I can tell you, if you, if you, if you uh, advocate and mobilize for the former prime minister to be the chairman of the AU, Africa Union Commission, mm. how does Azimio support us benefit? The gentleman will be seated in Addis Ababa just and will have very... individual. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, he's just an individual. Mm. Number two, if you give him an international assignment, Kenya's envoy, special envoy to wherever you want to take him, how many... Uh, job opportunities will that give to Azimio supporters. Yeah. Now the best opportunity for me would be for instance the leader of official opposition for which the constitution as we speak will not allow because you have to do put in place some extra efforts which might probably consider that you have conversations that take us back to the Na Kenya National Dialogue and Reconciliation mm. Accord, the late Kofi Annan processes, where you have uh, a special case, special purpose that then meet, helps you to meet what you want to be able to take care of. But now that is beautiful because then, as Azimio, they can be able to put in place a shadow government where they have their cabinet secretary for education, shadow interior minister, uh, cabinet secretary, yeah. and all the other spaces which are fully now funded by government. So the moment you put in place such a, a framework and a structure, it means that there are young people who might be who might be employed as drivers for mm -hmm. shadow cabinet secretaries. You have shadow principal secretaries. Yeah, there will be just a general feel that their the plan is also... To and that care. way a number of Azimio yeah. supporters will feel part of the government because right. we have seen that working for the former prime minister in the past. Kevin, we are doing very well. Alright, so um, very shortly we'll be waiting for that link while the president at the Kenya International Investment Conference taking place at the Safari Park Hotel. So stay uh, put for that. Anytime we get that link, of course, you know how you get it here on KBC Channel 1. Now, very quickly, let me take you some of the proposals that we have on the finance bill of 2023. One, income tax for those earning 500,000 shillings and above to be from 30% to 35%. We've had that for quite a long time. Housing fund of 3% of salary to be matched by employer. 3% employee, 3% employer. Raising excise duty on beauty products from 0.60% to 2.5 percent hmm. very bad proposal because if you look at the state of unemployment of mm -hmm. our country a number of the people that government is targeting and i think that probably government has done some data analysis yeah. to ensure that there is a big number of kenyans mm. who are engaging in that kind of industry some people are making jokes that even eyelashes will be taxed exactly but that's what it means <laughs> <laughs> so the government probably is imagining the number of salons and barber shops that are opening yeah, up in all yeah, course, yeah. And, and of course the beauty shops that mm. are coming up and he's saying if we have over a million Kenyans doing beauty industry engagement, why don't we increase tax? So it means that therefore, in a month or so, because there are also other proposals where government has said that you have to declare mm. certain resources before the end of 24 hours. So they are imagining that the moment they increase the tax from the base of those who are in that particular sector, yeah. then they will be able to coop a lot of money. But now the disadvantage is that the moment you increase the cost of uh, Actually, a, stamp a beauty... Actually, stamp duty from stamp duty is 
uh, 0 0.6, 0 shillings and 60 cents. And now it's going to go to 2 shillings and 50 cents. Yeah, so it's people will love to pay more. Mm. If, you, if, you, if you pay 800 Kenya shillings to shave your hair, it means you might actually pay 1,200 or so. Wait. If you are doing uh, this, uh, you uh, know. <laughs> my Baba is not looking at that. My yeah, yeah. He's just listening to it's, that. It's, 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 <laughs> the same, it's, a, it's the same measure like we normally see with oil and gas. Yeah. When the cost of uh, diesel, cost of petrol goes up, mm. the cost of, uh, you know, PSV, uh, cost of uh, Matatu fare also goes up. So it's actually yeah. the same math. Mm. I don't think that government has done enough to be able to look at uh, revenue uh, streams where they can be able to get resources. And I think for me, a proper engagement with, 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 uh, with county governments on a number of these issues, because that is also not a national government function. Mm. It is a county government function on entertainment. So I think government yeah. is, is trying to navigate around areas and that's why Senator Okia Umtata is saying we are going to take you to court because there are many things that you are jumping over without necessarily looking at the pros and cons, mm. but largely the, the, the cons, especially when it comes to do with the mm. national government. What are some of the proposals here? 15% withholding tax for digital content creators are very big concern for the young people who are doing content creation online. We have got intellectual property income tax at 30 of 30%. 30 Voice over artist, etc., etc. Raising VAT on petroleum products from 8 to 16 percent, the mm. max yeah. that it can go currently. And of course, reduction of withholding tax on lease premium on uh, move immovable property from 10 percent. To 7.5 percent and lastly scrapping of vat on lpg yeah um because uh, for instance if you talk about land rates uh the government has probably learned that not a number of people declare yeah. their land rates and that's one and uh, that's why a number of times we see government coming out to even uh, advertise for people to you know to to, to accept to be given discounts mm. by different agencies of government that if you declare your land rates within the first 30 days we are going to give you a discount mm. so i think that's one of the that's probably one of the only good things about the budget that has been has, that has been proposed because uh, and you tie that to the housing issues mm. then the government expects that uh, because for them to be able to get land as we already said earlier on they have to identify who owns that kind of land where is that land and probably hence some of the reasons within the changes in the in the ministry of lands uh, where we already we saw some changes taking place so there is already that anticipation that mm. uh, that there's going to be a lot of business that that government is going to do with with the land as a as a as an infrastructure for them to be able to undertake uh, the housing projects yeah. but moving that forward if you were to underscore the number of people who own even an eighth of an acre in this country and push them to declare or even reduce the land rate tax Session, mm. then you will excite people. So government wants to motivate people to declare the kind of land by paying less so that the more the people declare mm. and then they make their payments, the more money you have. Yeah, money you have. Yeah. So that's probably part of what government wants to do. What do you have on the front page of the, ta of the standard newspaper before we take a quick break? On the front page of the standard newspaper, tax pressure piles, tax pressure piles, and now President William Ruto faces build-up of political <laughs> hurricane in the coming days from threats of street protest by a sergeant, uh, a resurgent opposition, a former president who has refused to leave political stage and Kenyans who have rejected new tax measures few days to reading on the budget. This is exactly the question I asked you. Yeah. A very tough weeks ahead for the president. Last week they had got their, um, the NDC. Mm. I was there and raw and uncut, I listened to all the delegates and even the dignitaries who attended that particular function mm. and we have this now, you know, back and forth, jubilee this, jubilee that tax pressure also mounts the president. He doesn't know whether he's going to rally the entire Kenya Kwanzaa you know, brigade in parliament to pass this bill or he's also going to face opposition even from within. But let me ask you, mm -hmm. do you think the entire Kenya Kwanzaa uh, brigade on members in parliament support this bill? No. And that already reverberates from what the chair of the budget committee said. Uh, MP Molo, and he said that uh, we cannot pass the budget as is. And we have to make certain yes, amendments. Yes, we have to make certain amendments, and we went further to validate that by saying that Kenyans have even given us very many good proposals and recommendations on how we can be able to enhance revenue. Mm -hmm. Now, already the chair of the budget committee is preparing the president that the kind of talk you are having, yeah. the conversations that we are having with Kenyans mm -hmm. and what we are going to submit to you, mm -hmm. those three issues that form a triad are going to be totally different. So don't expect that all the Kenya Kwanzaa parliamentarians are going to be for you. Because remember that the budget committee is largely a government mechanism to be able to 
uh, past government uh, budgets for resources and all that. Because then on the opposition side, you have what we call the Public Accounts Committee mm. uh, that also is supposed to check what the Budget Committee and even uh, the side of government is doing. So the, to the extent that they are, they are all able to present um, differing opinions mm. and largely based on what Kenyans are saying, then it means that... Um, the parliamentarians from Kenya Kwanza government yes. might not all support the budget, number one. Number two, you look at the followership. Because poli uh, parliamentarians are politicians. Yes. And if you, you cannot be a politician, who can't listen to your followers? Because after five years, they will tell you you, you, you supported a budget that we rejected. But remember, Kenyans never forget. Yeah, exactly. And they say so. that Kenyan, Kenyan <laughs> voters never vote in their, their members' parliament. They vote them out. Exactly. Kevin, let's take a break. When we come back, we want to talk about that issue. And even um, the chief political advisor at the president, that is David D, said, made some quotes, um, mm. some tweets, and I'll give you those tweets, what did David D say about the issue of housing fund and his take on that as far as the housing fund is concerned. Let's also not forget that very shortly we'll be having that live link at the Safari Park Hotel, the Kenya International uh, Investment Conference taking place at the Safari Park Hotel. The president is expected there any time from now. Tax pressure pile. The president enters this week with a lot in store for him. We'll be right back shortly after this. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, let me take you through the tweets that David D put out there on the tweet on his Twitter page. Starting with the first one. The housing fund is not for financing development. It is a revolving fund for, quote-unquote, de-risking private developers by giving them a guaranteed buyer. The developer will finance the projects. Financing for buyers will come from other sources. The fund sits in between. That's according to the um, That's, that's uh, a carrot that is being used to fill up uh, a space that has uh, not done very well mm -hmm. by government. Because remember, as we said, that the government has not done proper public consultations. That also includes speaking to uh, private developers. Mm. For example, I was asking myself, how about if government sat, uh, sat and had a conversation with the circus? of Kenya yeah. because these are the people part of uh, whom have really done very well in so far as building houses and then selling them to Kenyans I even without necessarily having a mortgage plan that mm. you have to go to a bank. They sit with you, they ask you so in a month how much do you get okay how about if we give you uh, you pay this wholesome amount as a first installment, mm -hmm. we give you the house or you come and view the house yeah. you own it by the first installment and then we agree on a, on, a, on, a, on a payment plan, mm. which is not what government is intending to do. So by Mweshima David D talking about a revolving fund, mm -hmm. which is largely a fund that is revolving, a revolving fund is a fund that is put in place through agreed upon stakeholders. Yeah. In this case, government has not agreed with anyone. And government, governments all over, including in Singapore, I have not seen them putting in place houses for anyone. Even if you go to, uh, to Cape Town, South Africa, you mm -hmm. go to Pretoria, where the government of South, South Africa is also putting up houses, you go back to Singapore. It doesn't, the model is totally different. I saw the president hosting the Prime Minister of Singapore and saying we are going to borrow the model. The model in Singapore is a software issue. From the point a child is born, they know their rights and their responsibilities and what government needs to do, including parents. They know that for you, government will take you to school. You are supposed to work hard, uh, get a job which is also guaranteed by government. And government, before you get your money, it already takes back what it wants to get from mm -hmm. Singaporeans, mm -hmm. which is not what uh, I think the, the government of Kenya is intending to do. Now, what therefore needs to do, which is why David D, what needs to happen, which is why I think David is talking about a revolving uh, plan, a revolving fund as a guaranteed payment, mm -hmm. is that they want to boost um, uh, private developers mm -hmm. to get into a PPP, public-private partnership with yes. government. Mm -hmm. Now, they are going to be costings 
which already remember we spoke about the land rates. Yes. They want to excite as many private developers to be able to buy land from government so that they spread that the land rates mechanism where you have as many people paying back to government, hence the revolving fund. So it is a fund that is available. You go buy land and government can be able to loan you the money. You buy land, you put up your house, then you guarantee people that they will either buy or rent. The moment they pay you, you pay back to the revolving fund. Kevin, let me just give you, just ask a very simple question before yeah. I give you the next tweet. Yeah. What if the government decided and said, you know, what we are, every Kenyan you are going to contribute a certain amount and you know what you're going to do with the money? Build schools or build referral hospitals in all the eight regions. Eastern, Nyanza, what have you. Referral hospitals, yeah. well kitted with cancer centers, well kitted with psychological trauma centers, well kitted with everything you may call it. Don't you think we'd have such kind of a backlash? Hospitals uh, yeah. and schools. Just think about that. Yeah. Let me give you the next tweet yeah. by David D. David <laughs> says, the National Housing Development Fund offers a well-to-do means to give the children a start in life with a gift of a deposit on a decent, affordable house that they can visit without driving through raw sewage and fear of, listen to this, donating side mirrors to the underprivileged. Government is making an assumption that every Kenyan who is in Nairobi and uh, those who come from west to Yoma, where I come from, look to look for jobs, are looking for houses, and are coming here to do Mjengo. Now, the assumption that slums are only in Nairobi needs to depart from the president's mm. head, and indeed even his chief economic advisor. Yeah. Get into a conversation with county governments. The priority of the young people in Isiolo is not houses, and they are not going to come here to look for Mjengo jobs. Mm. And the priority of people in Turukana is not jobs. I mean, it's not ho ho houses. They're not going to come to Nairobi. I don't discuss the same, same discussion <laughs> with the deputy governor of yeah. Turukana County. It is not going to happen that way. Yeah. So think through a mechanism where, for example, you have one industry per county. And I had the president as I was walking in, now beginning to have this conversation that we are saying. Empower the lake region and put a fish industry there. The youth from this, the 14 counties of Lake Region Economic Block, including yeah. Kericho, Bomet, all those other counties, will not come to Nairobi to start looking for Mjengo. They will have something to do. Go to Western Kenya and see the, the dying fee, uh, sugar industry. Put up a strong milling sugar factory in Western Kenya mm. and then show youth that you now have jobs and then expand the agricultural uh, sector to be able to ensure that there is sugar can be grown. People are, are available to cut the sugar and load them into tractors yeah. and take them to the industries. They will not come to Nairobi to begin looking for Mjengo jobs. Uh, I have heard uh, Moshima Walo talking so vigorously around ICT. Mm. How about putting Wi-Fi in all the counties, 47 counties in Kenya? The youth will have mechanisms to now begin doing uh, ICT innovation, the TikToks. Look at the booming uh, ICT industry in Kenya. I think it's the, 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 the highest in, in Eastern in, yeah. in, in Central Africa. Why can't government begin to think outside the box and the imagination that everybody wants to be seen doing a Mjengo business. But you know why this is, why this is happening? Mm. And why I liked your uh, comparison and allegory with uh, putting investments in water, education and all that. Look at the management of a school board. Stealing money from a school is not easy. Because you first of all have a committee that is made up of villagers yes. who live around that, com that, that, that some school. some of the villagers are signatories. Before and some of the, exactly, before you make any account. transaction. Mm. In fact, even the chair of the school management board is not the principal. He's a villager who is just there yeah. and is interested in the school doing very well. Look at the health management com committees in the health sector. They're just villagers. So government is scared of whistleblowing. People will start tweeting and saying, oh, we already withdrew 500, uh, 500 million. We don't know where that money is going to go to, which is why the government has not properly helped Kenyans to understand. Yeah. Even the revolving fund that David D is talking about, what is the management structure? Who is going to be the members of the housing? Yeah, the yeah who is right. the custodian? You are telling us that you can withdraw your money after seven years. Is it like the NHI, the National Housing Corporation, NHC? Who are the custodians that I will be able to write to and tell them now I think I'm retiring or I want to resign from my job before the seventh year, how do I get back my savings? Yeah. So there are lots of lacunas, lots of gaps within a number of the proposals uh, by government and hence probably the conversations around having it as a revolving fund, which in my view might still not work very well. So government has to begin to have a proper conversation, mm -hmm. including even 
suspending that particular proposal and looking for other avenues of raising resources and revenue for the government. And I'm, I'm happy that the president had a sitting with KRA mm. <laughs> because remember that KRA over time, almost eight years, has also failed to meet its uh, revenue yeah, targets. Revenue target. you know? Yeah, there has to be a mechanism mm. of how you want to do things differently. So for example, if they spoke to me, I would tell them, organize the informal sector, formalize the informal, mm. the border borders, put them in a circle, ensure that you understand how many they are, how much they can pay per day or per month or even per week, mm -hmm. then show them where that money is going to against capacity development. So that, for example, the struggles that we see border border people having yeah. to even get insurance or a, a, a riding license, tell them, the moment you join this circle, we will put you into a partnership with NTSA, where you easily go through a course mm -hmm. and within one week or one month mm -hmm. we give you a driving a riding license we will uh, it's a complete master plan exactly yeah. which which i don't think is what government is talking about go to mamamboga i see uh, county assemblies uh, county assembly members uh, through the urban development departments of county governments putting in place some kiosks by the roadside yeah. but if you ask yourself who owns the kiosks they are friends of the waishimiwas mm. how about going and telling mamambogas in in, in an estate and they are organized like that all over the country, including in Turukana. You will find people in a market somewhere. Tell them, we don't want to be a government that only runs after you for 20 shillings or so. We are going to put you in a very organized, well-structured structures where when it is raining, you don't have to fight over umbrellas and all these things. We put up a very nice plan, then we enroll you as members. Yeah. Then we agree on a fee which you can comfortably play, pay. And if you cannot pay it comfortably, we link you to an MFI, a microfinance institution, mm. so that you have as many of these people who are not organized being organized. So the moment they all are organized within a, 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 bra a bracket, a network, or an association, or, or, or an organization, you are able to ensure that everyone is guaranteeing their members to be able to pay. And there is just the a moment, structured flow of money. Exactly. And yeah. you also help them understand where their money is going to mm. and they are able to see the benefits. The problem with Kenya is that you, you tax us more mm. but we can't see where the, the tax is going to. Before I take the next tweet because there were four tweets from David D. Now, political headache for the president. Number one, let me start with Ruto enters into the week facing opposition from Kenyans over the housing levy, uh, housing levy and the proposed finance bill that seeks to increase taxes on essential goods. We've discussed that. Mm. As a new parliamentarians, uh, parliamentary group meets on Tuesday, of course under the leadership of Raila Odinga to stretch strategize on how they will fight government proposal for more taxes. We've handled that, but we'll also talk yeah. about it shortly. Opposition could also rally its supporters to the streets this week after deadline for its demands to be met on bipartisan tax ex uh, talks expires on the day for national prayers. Mm -hmm. That lapses tomorrow. And finally, former President Uru Kenyatta returns to active politics and closing ranks with the Royla could mean more political trouble for Ruto. Correct. And probably I think, uh, of course, this is a live show, but I would have said, don't quote me anywhere. I think that <laughs> <laughs> the Everything people, goes. Yeah, the people at the mountain are still convinced somehow that the vote was stolen. Hence, one of the four agenda issues you around. Mean? Yeah. The, the assumption is that the vote was stolen. Mm. Hence, the conversation around opening up the server. But interestingly, even if you open the server, so what? What will you do? Mm -hmm. A gentleman has already been sworn in. He's, he's formed his government. He's moving on. It's almost nine months. Utadu. What is it that you really want to do? Do you think you four, you do, one is almost gone? Yeah, exactly. So I think that part of why President uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta is involved in this, in this uh, process of the Jubilee Party is to try and reorganize mm. to, towards 2027. Because if you listen to a number of the conversations up to the gubernatorial levels, mm. there could be talk. There, 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 there is actually talk that a number of the people who are who are sworn into offices did not win their seats. So if you put that together with the issues between uh, the deputy president, the talk around Mungiki and mm. uh, the arrests of Maina Jenga, they all do not add up. But they are all geared towards a specific mechanism, which a specific level, which mm. is to organize the Mount Kenya people around one voice. Because right now, probably the assumption is that there is a lacuna 
there is a big gap that there is no one who is ready and willing to, to really fill up. And they're looking at the deputy president and they're saying, mm. this is not the gentleman, that, the gentleman that you want to be our spokesperson. So maybe the president, and that's based on some of his public utterances, the manner in which I think he has also failed to, um, to present Mount Kenya as a block that can be able to speak for unity, and largely based on some of the appointments that we keep seeing happening, especially at very high level government, ministries, departments, and agencies, where the conversation more or less looks like uh, the deputy president has failed to lock some spaces and positions for the people from Mount Kenya. Mm. So, so I think there is also that discomfort that a number of the people and uh, leaders from Mount Kenya are taking advantage of and they're saying, yeah. we want a much more sober, much more sane and a much more appropriate voice mm. to be the one to organize and therefore speak on our behalf. So either the deputy president will have to come from his highest echelons and get to the level of the majority of the people, including the industrialists from Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if it were, I think, the, the former president, what he would have done was, would be to organize the big, big voices, yeah. the bank owners, industry owners, the people who have the monies from Mount Kenya and put them, treat them to a breakfast meeting like we always see at Safari Park, mm. rather like we used to see yeah. at Safari Park. And then they have a good conversation around how to present Mount Kenya as a block mm -hmm. that is able to bargain even for opportunities within government. Now, that goes all the way even to the debt, to the tenders. And I think we've already begun seeing the Kemsa scandal. We are already talking about the sugar scandal. So over time, unless the president in his tough talk around corruption stalls the kind of corruption talk that we are having, mm. we will continue to see most of this, uh, con uh, this tender corruption talks coming up. But now, that is why the former president is saying we need a party that we can be able to use as a special purpose vehicle to get what we are looking for from government. And I don't think President Turu Kenyatta, as much as uh, people have the opinion that he's a retired president, he needs to give this president room, there are still unsettled waters. Yeah, and yeah. those are really waters that when you go, if you go back to his relationship with the current president and his, as his deputy president during his last term in office, you can, of course, really tell that this gentleman is not yet done. What I'm trying to say is that this is a battle for two big boys, former president and now the, uh, the current deputy one president. One is a hustler, the other one is... <laughs> Do we have what you and Jubilee? But let me ask you, at the end of the day, the resuscitation of Jubilee Party, now that you brought it up, yeah. the resuscitation of Jubilee Party, how will it gain its, its place in the mountain? Now that Jubilee was largely voted out of the mountain in the last election and UDA completely swept the entire region, how will President um, Uhuru Kenyatta probably now go back and tell these guys, you know what, uh, this is what you know, better the devil you know, we have got two devils, quote unquote, now yeah. in the mountain. Mm. How will the former president now go back and tell people of Mount Kenya who voted against him last election and to start embracing the party that they did not vote for? It is a narrative. And the narrative is in what the president, the former president, or rather President Turu Kenyatta has consistently used. Mm. And he always says, I told you people, I told you, even at the NDC, he kept reminding Kenyans about the things that he used to see. And now the, the president, or UDA as a party, has been given the opportunity to be tested mm. and to be tried. So he has uh, some fodder, some political fodder and narrative to go back and say, it's been almost one year. Sasa Mungoje had it is four years. Mm. You will see what you will go through. And the people from the mountain are actually somehow experiencing it. They are feeling the, the heat. They are feeling the misses. And if you consistently remind them about quote-unquote the mystic, then chances that they can be able to reorganize and recoup about, uh, uh, about and around Jubilee are very high. And remember that uh, in 2013, President Uru Kenyatta and uh, President William Ruto were voted on a party which was not barely eight months old, yeah. uh, TNA. Mm -hmm. TNA was formed and it hit the ground and they went and mobilized and they had a very clear narrative mm -hmm. around um, unity, the, the, the youth voice and the, the space about moving Kenya forward towards an un uh, let me say an employment mm -hmm. not un mm. an 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 employment uh, narrative mm. so uh, president william ruto came up with a narrative around the economy the bottom up but if you look at his actions they more or less, more or less do not reflect the bottom up mechanism there right from time. yeah there's, of, there's of course time. there is still time, time but that time is time that they don't have why because of president Turu kenyatta he will keep telling people this time that you have is for you to feel the heat of the UDA government. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, important for UDA not to destroy Jubilee.
but to begin to look at how did they transcend to the level of kicking out Jubilee from Mount Kenya. They have to go back to that level and begin going back to the churches, convincing people that we have a plan that will work for you, what yeah. they normally call the plan, because that plan is working for the higher boys, but not for the hustlers. The muscle power of the current government, I mean, the former president will have a hard nut to crack, even climbing the mountain. I don't know how he's going to do it, but now you have the whole government with the entire system, they're able to do whatever they want with the mountain. I mean, He has the president, uh, Uru Kenyatta has what it takes to consolidate uh, Mount Kenya. Remember that they have tried threatening him, mm. including sending boys. Uh, the police has not told us who they were, mm. to Northlands to try and shake him. And during the NDC, he reminded Kenyans again, mm. they sent people to come and take my land and do all these things, but here I am, I'm still here. Yeah. Money and politics, my brother. That is what the difference is going to be. Money. The President Uru Kenyatta has enough money to be able to reorganize Jubilee. And, and that's part of what I think Azimio Laomoja is, uh, is, is, is banking on. If you listen to a number of the conversations mm. at uh, Inyata, uh, at uh, former Vice President uh, Kalonzo Musioka's home during mm. the prayer, they kept reminding people about uh, the interference that, you, that Kenya Kwanzaa government is, is, is uh, having with Jubilee Party and the opportunities around mobilizing. And hence now the talks with around Maina and Jenga. Having more than 2,000 people at DCI yeah. and you are hurling tear gas at them and they're not moving and they're just there singing and, and they, they still maintain and, and, and sustain the heat from the police is not, not cheap. It means that the uh, Jubilee government has an opportunity to begin to think through not the Mungiki type of uh, you know mobilization because mm. I think that is dead and talks around bringing back Mungiki I think are largely misplaced because the security infrastructure of Kenya today will it's not allow different. for any gangs yeah. even such like uh, the Mungiki ones. Kevin. The Let Me Shook is swept Mungiki completely out of the central. Country. Precisely, and the fear, the exactly. fear about what the government can do yeah. against such gangs is still alive. May he rest in peace. God bless right. you. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at what we have on the front page of the Daily Nation. We are doing very well. Uh, Ruto 6, 2 billion shillings to Globetrot. This is completely different from what is on the front pages of these local dailies. Ruto 6, 2 billion shillings to Globetrot. Now, presidency burst full year budget in seven months. Yeah. Presidency burst full year budget in seven months. This is what Daily Nation says. Taxpayers will fork out 2 billion shillings to facilitate President William Ruto's trips abroad if Parliament approves the budget proposals for the financial year starting July 1st. Now, the National Treasury has allocated 700 million shillings for the President's state visits, but MPs have now been told to add another 1.3 billion shillings. The story is fully fleshed out there for you on page four. That is what's on the front page of the Daily Nation. Two billion shillings to Globetrot? It's a joke. Why? Because um, the president will love to convince us about the value for our money. So you go to UK and you come back, what have you come back with? You go to Uganda here, what have you brought back? You go to South Africa, spend four days with a, an entourage of... Uh, 200 people, what have you brought back? Of mm. course, you, you tell us that Kenyans will now visit uh, South Africa visa-free for one month and all that. So what? Now, that is, that is, that is the kind of dilemma mm. that the president has. That if you look at our internal mechanisms to generate revenue, mm. they are almost uh, fully locked out. Hence, the conversations that uh, are going on and that we've been having for a better part of this morning around the tax that the president has to really look for the opportunities to raise revenue for his government. Mm. Failure to do that is to globe drop and uh, globe trot and look for where the money is. So you have to have appointments with the leaders, our industrialists, presidents, heads of states out there, heads of government to try and see whether you can get into partnerships. Mm. Now, remember that Kenyans also have a very good memory around such kind of partnerships. And the most easiest is uh, the railway, uh, this Mombasa, the SGR, the SGR precisely, mm. the standard gauge railway line, where even the contracts that Kenya has with China have not been released to the public. I mean, yeah. court pressure, public pressure, and the desire for Kenyans to really see what is happening. Many examples that we have. So the president has to do two things. One, have an open government. Mm -hmm. Tell us, ladies and gentlemen, I am traveling, going to this country. The expectations are that we will have conversations with one, two, three, four. 
and I hope that when I come back to Kenya, this is going to be the value for your money. Mm. Now, most of these plans don't work that way because there are long-term issues. Yeah. I remember that those the people you are going to visit are not waiting for you and, and hoping that, yes, when you come, we are going to give you bags of money. There has to be a plan. Some of them, like in the US, in the UK, they have to be approved by their senators, by their mm. par parliamentarians. So it's not something that you walk in and you walk out with. So the president has to do the second thing, which is to properly excite Kenyans around the two billion. Mm -hmm. Why must you do it? Remember, in, in this region, there are also presidents who are elected and they never visited any country. Mm. The late Magufuli, for example. And even in Uganda here, if you ask President Museveni, so since you've been president all these years, or even the last, uh, I think they, they held the elections that just about a, a year ago, yes. how many countries have you visited? And what have you benefited? Or what, 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 what have you brought for Ugandans? If, you, if, we can't be able, if we can't be able to hold the president accountable, towards uh, the 700 million which as you read it is almost is his hit his it's 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 uh, apex he mm. cannot spend any further mm. and part of that money is the money we we see doing the prayer days every single saturday and every single sunday mm. is a waste of public resources in my view we don't have to be as a uh, as extravagant for us to show that we are working for the people of Kenya, the president has to be a president. You preside over certain uh, service delivery mechanisms and you work with your ministries mm. and your cabinet secretaries and then you allow them to also show Kenyans what they have been able to do, which is why partly parliament has decided to go against the constitution and is inviting cabinet secretaries into the National okay. Assembly to share a scorecard. That is a mechanism to try and fill a gap which the president is really working so hard had mm. to invest in including in the financial resources that we are okay. seeing Kevin, being let's, let, let's for a minute let's talk being academic sure. and let's, let's assume that at this particular point Kenyans would like to get their own revenue moving mm -hmm. as a country are we able to move our own economy without international borrowing are we able are we stable enough as a nation that we pay taxes from our own production, whichever way they call it, agribusiness, you know, the small the SMEs and what have you, are we able to finance our own budget? Yes. How? Our budget is uh, almost 3.4 trillion. I think they are going to read a 3.6 trillion budget, mm. um, which, is, uh, which is a little bit high if mm. you look at our revenue sources and also the debt burden, which That's is at negative. That's an increase from the last year's uh, exactly. financial year. Exactly. Yeah. So our, our debt burden is about uh, 9.3, negative 9.3 trillion, mm -hmm. which is almost three times, <laughs> you know, uh, the, 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 the three times the last 10 years. Mm. But if you look at the conversation that we've been having about counties, for example, we've done an analysis through County Governance Watch and other agencies, the World Bank and mm -hmm. others, about on-source revenues for county governments. The capacity and opportunity within the 47 counties is 210 billion shillings. Mm. That is an annual OSR, on-source revenue. Yes. So if you are to do it for, for five years, you have more than 10, uh, 10, 10 billion. Now, 10 billion against an, a budget of three, of, three, three, of 3 trillion, that is just at the national, at the, at the county levels, without necessarily looking at what the national government is able to do, which mm. includes public-private partnerships, the MPESAs, you know, I mean the Safaricoms, the MFIs, microfinance institutions. Mm. So I think we have the opportunity, but there has not been a very clear thought, because even the county governments are only doing 3 billion, mm. which is way low before, be, uh, way low be, be, below uh, the opportunity I'll, I'll, which I'll we have. I'll have to cut you short. No problem. When you come back, you're going to make a full submission on that because I'm quite interested in understanding are we able to do our own revenue? Are you able to collect as a nation so that we don't depend on international borrowing for us to survive as a nation? Let's take a break. And we come back, Kevin Osido, Governance Expert, Executive Director of County Governments, uh, County Governance Watch. We are trying to unpack some of these bottles one by one. Let's take a break. We'll be right So, with Kevin Osido here, still unpacking what we have on the local dailies, I mean, it's quite interesting. Wake up and 
talk what we can talk about. I mean, politics drives this nation. Okay, so let's talk about this issue. In the next few minutes, as I promise, I continue to promise you that uh, the president will be at the Safari Park. We'll be having that link of the Kenya International Investment Conference taking place at the Safari Park Hotel, talking about issues with the economy and uh, development of this nation. Of course, you have got local investors and international friends who are gracing that particular event, which is quite instrumental to the development of our country. Right, But now, Kevin, I'm still giving you that one minute to finish what you're talking about. We're talking the issue of own source revenue. When you look at Turkana County, Mombasa County, Lamu, Homo Bay, Nairobi, okay, Nairobi, we are able to meet our own demands. Mm. Are we able as a nation to keep on pushing and say, you know what, instead of depending on a big brothers out there, we can do this as a nation? It's possible. I think that uh, part of the challenge we have is this of a concentration in uh, partnerships, mm. especially that, uh, they are th that we must have donors who have also done very well in terms of helping our, our country to grow from, mm. uh, you know, uh, the treasures and all the way now we stand as a middle income uh, economy, which uh, from 2013 I think is where we are rated. Uh, we are no longer low income or uh, uh, least developed mm. or whatever. Mm. And, and that is really as a result of the hands of our bigger brothers that have been holding us. But then yes. the question that would beg is for how long should that or will that happen? Especially against uh, questions that have been raised uh, around corruption and how we are unable to just account for, for monies. Mm. And for example, you see this conversation around the stolen money for the malaria money from Ministry of Health. Mm. Did it really have to take the bigger brother to raise an, a hand and push the president to even yeah. talk about corruption? Yeah. And we saw heads rolling. A PS had to go home and directors and now KEMSA and a lot is happening. But now, how about if we went back and asked ourselves, how do we deal with corruption money, uh, the, the corruption uh, challenges that we have? So that as the president has already started the ball rolling, we have big names being arrested and, and, and uh, you know, money being re recouped back to the economy. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at, uh, at the monies that we have lost uh, against the monies that we have borrowed, that is why Kenyans can't touch, you know, the, the loans that we take from other countries. Because mm -hmm. you take 10,000 and then you steal 8,000. So service delivery and economic development is only left with 2,000. It's not possible for that to happen. So we must begin to strengthen our corruption drug nets and deal with the cartels both at national and also county levels. As you were saying earlier on, mm -hmm. if you look at the on-source revenue opportunity for counties, including the ones that you have mentioned, Mombasa, for example, with its tourism, has really been doing uh, uh, badly. Mm -hmm. Of course, auspices to COVID-19, we saw uh, hotels being closed down, issues around travel advisories, issues around insecurity and the radical uh, terrorism issues, which now Kenya has done very progressively well, because mm -hmm. it's long since we had a very active uh, terrorist attack in any of our big cities, but it's, 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 it's as a result of the good work that is being done by our security forces and also the community and citizens. Mm. But if we were to put together the own source revenue potentials, you know, counties have more than 110 plus revenue streams from data that has been done by Commission on Revenue uh, Allocation. We only have a concentration on one or two streams. One of those, of course, is agriculture. So we have agriculture, which also contributes very minimally. But even if you look at the investment that governments, both national and counties, are putting in the agriculture, it, it, it does not fit the kind of potential that our agriculture sector has mm -hmm. because of the gaps that we have, which include conversations around uh, uh, you know, uh, production, which has to do with fertilizers, even the mechanism to plow our, our farms. You know, we have some county governments that now tell people to pay some money and then they send tractors to their farms. Mm. How about making it as an incentive? Because there are still other people who don't have that, that kind of money. But even for those who have, you don't see the sustained conversation around extension uh, officers going to visit them to help them enhance their production. Yeah. Those who are doing, for example, cattle or, or dairy farming, why must even poultry, why must their livestock and, and their poultry uh, keep dying mm. just because an extension farmer did not show up at the right time mm. or a vaccine was not given at the right time? So, so, uh, and then you look at property rates. Where we have the land rates, we have concerns around counties yeah. and, and, the, and the default are levels, which counties are not very keen to go mm -hmm. back to mm -hmm. and ask people, why are you defaulting? 
So, so, so a lot that we can put in place, but I, I think that the concentration in national government to go and borrow money, yes. which is why the deputy pres president the other day was telling governors in Mombasa, we won't go and borrow money, then you will get the money, then you expect us to give you that okay. money. When you look at this situation, uh, yeah. Kevin, I mean, as, as county watch, mm -hmm. Anytime you do your data analysis and comparison and your study and research, how does County X benefit from County Y? For example, how does County Kajiado benefit from, you know, a mm. neighboring county of Machakos or mm. Nairobi? Mm. How does Kiambu benefit from Nakuru County or Narok? Let's go even as far as CIA. How does CIA benefit from Mombasa County? That is a very good question. You know. And you see, that question is what pushed the Council of Governors mm. now and, of course, uh, devolution partners to organize counties into what is called economic blocks. Mm. So now we have economic blocks that are supposed to help in that okay. value addi addition mm. question, where counties are able to analyze their value for benefit and, and, and of course, levels of mm. partnerships. And those partners, they are better examples of partnerships they are also very bad examples for mm. example uh, Mura, Muranga County and uh, Nairobi County mm. anytime you have water losses in Nairobi there has to be a problem okay. in Muranga County because we have failed to account for the water that comes to Nairobi from Muranga and many other conversations okay. policy let's, issues let's, and I'm, others. I'm told that that leg that we're waiting for is now for my question let me just ask you now yeah. how important is this conference for us as a nation now that we are talking matters tax we're talking matters economy and you know the issue of, 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 of um, how we can re generate our own revenue yeah. as you to handle this particular um, uh, question yeah this is a very very important uh, platform mm. for us as, as, a, as a people Africans to be able to show our power, metal, and uh, what we basically have mm. in terms of uh, uh, um, opportunities to do business. And I am hoping that uh, Kenya is going to be able to showcase what we have to excite uh, African uh, uh, nations. Yeah. That it's also going to be an opportunity to deal with some of the concerns because uh, there could be short, medium term, and also the longer term issues mm. that, that uh, arise from this kind of conversations. Mm. And part of those longer term issues include uh, migration laws. Remember that internationally or globally right now, the mm. concern has been about, uh, about uh, migrants and migration issues. People who are moving from one country to another, even borders, across borders, mm. uh, looking for jobs and opportunities. So the labor, labor export concerns must be a conversation, and I hope it is one of the talks that are going to be taking place at this very important conversation we have to be able to also um, showcase because if this is the third one mm -hmm. then what what happened in the first one uh, what are the benefits or what are the opportunities that you are able to accrue from the second one yeah. and so what do we look at especially moving forward from uh, uh, the third level of, of uh, the continental free trade conversation mm. and uh, what are some of the lessons that, that uh, Africa has learned from other mechanisms like AGOA which is driven by the US government mm. you know, uh, um, African Government uh, Opportunities Act that therefore pushes uh, partnership uh, uh, proposals between the US and, uh, and, and, and Africa nations. Of course, our president is the best person to address this kind of uh, platform because remember that on various occasions mm. he has been making very interesting comments yeah. around Africans mm. standing together as Africans and not being seen as a uh, as secondary, uh, you know, as stakeholders to important conversations. Mm. Uh, so, so we are will be looking forward to listening to him speaking politically around yeah. how to organize Africans to be able to meet their market, uh, labor economy, mm. and also. Um, employment needs. But I also have to talk about the diaspora remissions for Kenya. Mm. Because even as Shopping. we talk about Africa continental free uh, tr trade area, the president of Kenya has to excite the diaspora to continuously remit, uh, remit their, their remissions, mm. rather their contributions back to the economy. And I think since the last uh, 10 years, this is the worst that the diaspora has done because it's gone down to almost three or 300 to about 1.2 billion yeah. Kenya shillings, money that so is because, being because remitted. Because of the uncertainty, because after election, yeah, 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 many, many, yeah, ma many, many like shocks, including even yeah. the concerns around Azimio and Kenya Kwanzaa. That mm. discussion, exactly. I think the president also will have to really continue to yes. um, excite investors that mm. Kenya is a safe place despite all these things that are happening and that we are ready to do business okay. with, the, right. with many people. Thank you for that. Of course we'll be crossing over once the president arrives there it's be to be happening there. This is the third one, the third international invest investment conference taking place at the Safari Park. So if you are an investor this is the only place for you to 
uh, take a look and watch what fit your competitors actually have and you can also learn something from that okay let's go back to our discussion i asked you a question of cross-county investment yeah. and business how does county x and y benefit from one another so that that is the day um a farmer in in county x can benefit from a farmer or even an investor in county y from your own data analysis research and what you have on paper are they implementable they are implementable but for most of the challenges that exist are largely political mm. so the political goodwill which uh, brought down a number of issues but let me just uh, uh, share with you maybe one or two the first one is a term of office that some of the conversations that are taking place mm. cannot be exhausted in five years. For example, opening a bank. Yeah. And I remember that the Lake Region Economic Block, for example, that brings together the 14 counties from the Lake Region, have been having that very continuous conversation around um, an opportunity to have one block where even counties can be able to, um, to get loans mm. or to request for loans or collaterals or whatever if they want to be, to be able to do business. And that's a conversation that has been going on for the last, I think, uh, more than uh, since devolution started mm. uh, largely from 2016 mm -hmm. so if you have a governor who is going to serve for only five years you don't want to spend too much time talking about things which might not show your value as a governor to your people mm. right now so you want to look at small little things and that's why for example you've seen governors doing uh, economic uh, regional economic block conferences so the people from Abadeas will have their conference where they want to call it maybe an investments forum mm -hmm. the people from uh, southeastern where Machakos is want to have their own conference to talk about investment opportunities yeah. but if you look at uh, most of the conversations they are conversations that more or less tend to meet uh, a need which is for now mm -hmm. because government uh, county gov co county governments especially the governors want to do things which can be seen for them within a span be, of five years yes exactly yes but largely for them to excite the voter block so that they are elected in the next uh, the next time mm. but there are also some very good things for example uh, uh, uniform uh, rates or ta taxes for, for farmers within an, an economic block. Mm -hmm. So that, for example, when you talk about the CES, initially we used to see counties having different uh, levies for the monies which are being uh, uh, taken from farmers, transporters, among others. Yes. But right now, the county assemblies have been trained through uh, Commission on Revenue Allocation and other partners to also consider having laws so that if you are in, a, in, a, in, a, in an economic block mm. and one county has a CES law, or a tax law, then the, uh, the question would be, why, why, why doesn't the other county have it? Because the county that has a law will tax its, its citizens, yes. and then they cross over to another county where they will not be taxed. So you actually lose money by not ta uh, having that tax in place. Why you don't have the tax in place is because there is no law that therefore pushes you as a county government yeah. to be able to show uh, the kind of tax that you want to levy on your residents. I mean, we've had, ever since the, the, inver the advent of the new constitution, and devolution of course we have for example the lake region economic block what are some of the notable changes or probably if you can talk about because when you talk about inter-county development what are some of the notable changes in terms of trade and development that you've so far captured in these regions since the investment this economic was 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 developed yeah we have got Bumet, transoya we have mumia bungoma county and etc etc yeah are you able to capture certain changes and development that is noticeable to the to these respective counties? For example, we have the joint advocacy framework by the governors around uh, macro investment opportunities. Mm. For example, when you hear the president talking about a fish industry, mm -hmm. he's not just imagining. He's being pushed by people. And for example, the yeah. region people are saying, mm. why should our fish go all the way to Thika? What is this thing in being done in Thika that we that can't do be done here. around here? So mm -hmm. that is, a, that is a, a conversation that is emanating from this kind of uh, intergovernmental and county <coughs> economic block conversations. Mm. Of course, the second issue is a grants for uh, grants and, lo and loaning schemes for counties, mm -hmm. which has been adopted from all the regional economic blocks up to the level of the Council of Governors, for them to be able to be given an opportunity also to borrow, mm. that you can borrow as a county or as a block. And why that is important? is because of the guarantee scheme. A county that gets, for example, 3 billion shillings uh, from uh, the exchequer has no business borrowing 15 billion because mm. you cannot show how you are you going to... It. Yeah, you can't service it. We can't see how you are going to repay it. Yeah. But if you say, I am a member of a block that is able to get another uh, 9 billion... Mm. 
then we can pay you back. But then you remember that it has to be on a macro investments mechanism that is able to service all the other counties that, that form part of that block. So that now you begin to talk about value addition mechanisms, mm. value for money, <clears throat> and it is also easy for that conversation to go down to the common citizen. So that, for example, if you go to Kisi, for example, where you have the soapstone, and I'm sure you've been to Kisi many yeah. times, Victor, you walk, uh, you, you drive through that stretch between Sotik all the way to Keancha, Isibania, see the number of young people are selling their soapstones. Mm. How about a county government like Kisi showing the farmers how they can be able to train them to have value addition and then you also help them to get markets so that you help them to make as many of those soapstone. Yeah. Then they buy, you buy from them as a county government, then you are able to export as a block mm. as opposed to individual investors coming to buy and then they take them to wherever they, they you cannot be able to track or, or even show. So counties are being very innovative right now to be able to look at what they have in terms of capacity and also assets so that you look at um, if we were to be able to work with our farmers mm. yeah mm -hmm. what is it that the farmers can be able to do as a block as opposed to in the individual farmers mm. but that is just an international trade uh, framework mm. even locally we have for example the conversations around the milk from Muranga being taken to areas like Isiolo. And what does Isiolo have mm. that they can be able to give back to Muranga? The water that is coming from Muranga, we already spoke about it into Nairobi, and what can the people of Muranga benefit from Nairobi? Yeah. You go to Jomoya, La County uh, Puani, the, from the, the, the six counties from the, from the coast mm. uh, province, mm -hmm. the, the coast region rather, they also have uh, value addition mechanisms that conversations where they are able to have talks, especially around security, hence the reduction of uh, terrorism and radicalization issues. Because remember that terrorists will move from one region, one border to another. So yes. if they come from Hola in Tana, in Tana River, there has to be a mechanism of how the people in Kilifi will get to know that there is a newcomer who has come in here, mm. this is who they are, until when they get to uh, the border of Kenya and Tanzania in Taveta. Mm. So that's a conversation that takes place at the level of the regional economic block for counties, but those are just some of the low-lying fruits, yeah. I think, that we can be able to benefit as, as a, we talk as a about matters economy and all that. So let's go back to Habeku is at the Safari Park night right now. She's giving us... Uh, um, okay. Director? Okay, I'm told that we do take a break. And we come back, we'll be crossing over to Safari Park that uh, will now be ha having the sights and sounds of what we have at the exhibition centers. What do we really have to offer as a nation? It's a very, very good way to start our week in terms of business. This is interesting. Politics, Kando to Mega Kidogo. Kidogo to Kando. Let's talk about Biashara today. We'll be right back after this with Kevin.